Hello there, everybody. How are you doing? It has been a busy old month here in Hong Kong. As I'm recording this, we're just coming to the end of May, uh, going into June. Can't believe that summer is almost here, though. If you look outside where I am at the moment, it's completely pouring down and it is miserable. And I've been doing this in Hong Kong for a long time, so there we go. But I've spent the last month, my last video was talking about the European Union's Artificial Intelligence Act, which is very much a framework. Uh, regulating AI, putting it into risk categories, making sure that hopefully, within the EU at least, uh, AI could not be used to dis disadvantage people or make people's lives worse. Um, because there's one of the great worries that we, we don't know how AI is going to play out. And I did a very interesting talk relatively recently. Um, it's part of a panel actually talk about the ethics of AI and the future of work, whether we're going to all be replaced. And there's a massive concern within the people there that actually, yes, we are. We're going to see a real game changer in the way that people's lives and dis livelihoods get displaced. The theory being that large AI models become more powerful, can do more than people could normally do and more cheaply. And the way that big business goes and the way that shareholders want their, to get their profits from companies will be that they'll deploy that. We don't need as many workers anymore or we can pay them less or people will do minimum wage and everything will be run by AI. And I made the point of that, as if you do that, if you're developing products using AI and you're trying to sell a product, but there's no one with any capital or any money to buy that product, how does this all play out? Do we create this whole new world of AI surfs where people eventually really can't afford to do anything? And it goes back to something that I think Elon Musk said a very, very long time ago when we talk about automation. This is before AI was really a big topic here in Hong Kong or anywhere else in the world, where it's that people would live lives of productive leisure, which would be great if they had money. So it is a bit of a concern. I think we need to be thinking about ethics and how we look after people when we have what seems to be coming very quickly now, a big AI revolution. But I don't know if we'll have time to do that. So the run thing I really want to talk about is ethics, but really it's ChatGPT 4.0. Uh, you must have seen this, 4.0, not 4.0, 4.0. It's called 4.0 because it's, it is a game changer. It is essentially doing what we predicted AI to be like in science fiction movies. Uh, it's essentially more powerful than, this is a terrible example, than the computer that people used to talk to on Star Trek, which I always thought was really cool, that it could answer queries and control things. But it wouldn't necessarily generate like sound or to create audio, write books for people. So ChatGPT 4.0, rather than just being a generative AI that responds to a, 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 a sort of written prompt and responds with writing, it unifies the various AI models. So it can generate and respond to not just text, but also to video and to audio. So that means it can respond to it when you input it, and it will output whatever you need in terms of audio, video, and written text. There are some videos doing the rounds put together by um, by OpenAI, where they have two AIs essentially having a conversation with each other, interacting with each other, uh, singing together. And it is part of it is this this is absolutely fascinating. But you can see the guy watching the video as he's doing it, and he's smiling, thinking, This is great. But you can see almost in the back of his mind, saying, What's my role going to be in this in the future? And this raises some really interesting questions. So in the press uh, last week, so this would have been the penultimate week of May, if you're trying to figure out when this recorded and you're watching this in the future, uh, there was discussion of AI companies essentially having to come to some, some sort of framework or some agreement whereby they would agree not to go any step too far to the point, the point that AI could be danger to humanity and to lives and to livelihoods. And this seemed like the most wishy-washy agreement. All of the big AI companies or some of the big AI companies, most of them Western AI companies, signed up to this. Um, but it just seems like a complete empty gesture. It seems like a, a complete waste of time because who's really going to do that? We, there's no way that someone's going to forego the money they can make or the advancements in technology they can make by pushing AI as quickly and as powerfully and as more and trying to become more dominant with it as possible. There's money to be made for one thing if you're going to work in a very capitalist society. If you're someone who isn't, who just wants to gain an upper hand, if you're a, a, a nation state who wants to think, well, we need more power, how can we be more powerful? You're not going to pause AI. You're not going to say, we're not going to use it. We're not going to stop that. That cat is well and truly out of the bag. That ship has sailed. The genie is out of the bottle. So it's really going to be up to governments. And governments are going to have to try and think, what are we going to do in terms of our people, of our population? Governments are there essentially to look after the humans who are within their society, and hopefully the animals too, for that matter. But there we are, it's another, a topic for another time. Um, 
And the concern, if I was a, a major politician of, of any country at the moment, seeing how AI is going to start displacing people because people are worried, very worried about the future of their work, I'd be very worried about civil unrest. I'd really worry that people are going to say, well, suddenly we're all out of jobs. Uh, what are we going to do? Do we just go to the streets? Do we start rioting? Do we start, you know, looting and pillaging? Because literally, other than, otherwise than that, we aren't going to be able to afford food because everything's going to be done by AI models. And I do worry. It's um, this is a bit of a doom mongering uh, sort of video, but the new Mad Max film is out, and it feels like we could be one step closer to living. Some of us living in this great brilliant society, we're all living in ivory towers and AI is looking after our every whim because we're very rich. Or maybe we're in space, who knows. And some of us are going to be living in the desert, fighting each other, hopefully not wearing bondage gear, it just seems to happen in most of the Mad Max movies. But you never know, you can't rule these things out in the future, who knows. That is a thought that I don't really want to go into. So what I think we really need now is, and this follows on from the EU's uh, Artificial Intelligence Act, is I think nation states need to come together what we could really do with is not just the AI companies trying to say, well, we're going to have a moratorium on what we're doing and try and pause things. We also need governments to work together. It's not good enough anymore to essentially say, well, in this jurisdiction, we'll do this, in this jurisdiction, we'll do this, and in this jurisdiction, well, we want to make sure that we're the leaders of AI, so we're not going to put any controls on it because it's going to get out of control. Whoever builds the most powerful AI is going to become dominant. It's a bit like search engines on the in when, when the internet was coming into, uh, into its own. And I think we could see some considerable civil unrest if things go wrong. People are very, very worried. Now, we have elections in, uh, in the UK. They've just announced a general election. I'm pretty sure the Conservative Party is going to go. I'm very surprised if they don't, but who knows? Who knows? Anything could really happen. We've also got the US presidential election. And I'm surprised that thoughts of AI and livelihood aren't a part of some of the manifestos or some of the campaigns that they're running. Uh, maybe Biden and Trump are a bit too old to be thinking too much about AI. I don't know. Uh, and I guess it's just the, just the case now that the um, general election in the UK has been called. But I think it should be a big deal because this could be the biggest change to people's lives now in terms of displacing them. Because if you've got a tool that can literally create almost anything at the drop of a hat more quickly and there's no limits to it and there's no controls on it and nobody thinks, is it ethically correct that we should be using this in every instance, um, then I think we've got a problem. And even if you haven't got that problem, if people do start to control how it's going to be used, not everyone is going to agree. So I do think we need an ethics code. We may even need to have governments talking about this or a treaty, an international treaty on the use of AI, although these can be broken or ignored at will. Uh, and it'll be interesting to see how it plays out. I'm very excited about the developments we're going to see. I'm very, very interested to see how AI is going to continue to shape our lives, um, and particularly in terms of creativity. I mean, we've already seen how it's changing the way that people work, particularly people working in sort of administrative roles or admin jobs or control or basically processing large amounts of data. Uh, we've also seen to a certain extent how it's displaced people in terms of, of, of writing. Lots of AI written books are now available on Amazon and they're pretty trashy to be perfectly honest, but also in terms of creating images. But as the things come together where you can essentially create any multimedia project using an AI prompt, create any song using an AI prompt, we'll have to see whether any controls are imposed. I think there will be calls for more controls. Um, I think it will take a while. I think we'll be a few years away. We'll have to see whether they actually have any effect. Um, I'm very, very interested in your thoughts. I think this would be a great topic for a round table to get some people to talk to, around the table to talk together, both AI developers, people working in tech and those working in traditional jobs and those working in terms of making sure that people actually have enough food, enough drink, enough livelihood essentially to get by in life as to what their worries are. Because if I was working in a administrative job, I would have already been very worried. And if I'm on a creative job, I'd be very worried. If I'm in pretty much any job, there's a good chance that AI would be great as a tool. But if people are trying to save money, they think, well, do we really need all these people when we get AI to do all of the grunt work and just have one or two people within our organization? So we'll see. Maybe there'll be some rule about you can't replace, uh, you can't replace, uh, it sounds a bit like Blade Runner, you can't replace people with AI, you can't replace people with replicants, who knows? I don't think they will, though. I think we're going to see a hodgepodge of mess, and I think things could get quite nasty in the next couple of years as AI really, really takes the centre stage. 
But we'll see. I remain optimistic. I've probably been reading too many sci-fi books, but that is it from me for now. As I said, I'm doing lots of events. I'm speaking at lots of things through um, the rest of May and June. Uh, I also might be doing some stuff in the UK, so drop me a line if you'd like me to do something with you. I'd love to if you'd like to do a talk, and uh, if you want to come to one of my events, find them on LinkedIn. In the meantime, don't have nightmares. Tell me what you think about AI. What would an AI framework, what would an ethics framework, a global one look like? How would you get multiple jurisdictions to, to, to chime in? I mean, is there any, any chance that Russia, China, the US, the UK, uh, Israel, let's put all the places where things could potentially be going wrong, all these places, is there any chance they could agree on anything, let alone an ethics framework on AI? I don't think so, but maybe we need one. Anyway, don't have nightmares. Thanks for watching. I'll be back very, very soon. Have a good one. Take care.